<clears throat> there we go. Hello. I uh, was about to email you to see if, uh, if everything was going fine. Uh, I, I got back to the office a little bit later than usual. New problem. The the recorder is running, and you are ready to go whenever you feel like it. After you let the cat in or out, whichever direction that was. <laughs> Ugh, they they abuse the fact that I uh, will let them in and, and or out. And uh, I got a little further today than I did in this morning's class, so I think you'll have a little bit easier time this afternoon. Okay. Um... Yeah, I've reviewed it myself, so it should is, uh, go smooth. There was a question on, uh, give me, let me remember, I think it was lab 22. There's a data file that I don't have linked. And I think when you did that lab, you put it in the chat. So if somebody asks about that, um, I guess we uh, do that again. So okay. It was called hypothesis test.csd. I think it was that one. All right. Um, let me think. Well, maybe it was 23. Uh, let's see, it should be Mr. Seeing if he's logged in right. He's not logged in yet. Okay. I'll be sure to ask once I get. Okay. And I will, I'll get around to trying to find it and get it properly linked. But I am reluctant to uh, mess with it now that it's deployed. So, right. Okay, good. Okay, I will, uh, I'm gonna mute myself. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I, I'm gonna mute myself. I have a meeting off campus in a few minutes, so I'm gonna leave you to your own devices. When you get Sounds done, good. just hang up and the auto record takes care of uh, the capture. All right. Okie doke. So today's lab is basically doing the exact same thing that we um, did in the lesson. We want to get some plots about this data here and this data each entry has a, you know, an ID and also a date as well as a flow rate. Oops. Um, now, what we would like to do is to be able to use this data of historical flow rates in um, a Spring Creek near Spring, Texas. And what we'd like to do is to be able to use past data. I suppose I should have asked first if everybody can see my screen. One of these days, it's not going to work, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to know. All right, good. So we want to be able to use past data to predict the future. What's the likelihood in flow rate exceeding a certain amount. So uh, some visual plots will be nice in order to um, get everything rolling. But at the end of the day, what we would really like to fill out is this table here. So what we have is, so the first entry, there is a particular flow value where there's a 75% chance of getting a greater flow. So Remember, this is like liters per in a day or something for the river. And so whatever this value is, there's a 75% chance on any given day that the, the true value of how much water goes through is going to be greater. So it's not super useful. Maybe if you want to talk about a minimum flow or something like that, who knows. Um, we get into things like this. So um, 
even 75 is fine. This is saying like 25% chance that we're going to have a greater flow value than whatever. So 90% chance, or I'm sorry, a 10% chance we'll have a greater flow value than this. So this might be the value you want to um, have your infrastructure ready to take at any given time. And this value might be the one you want the limit of your infrastructure to be able to handle. And uh, these two values are going from 99 to 99.9. .9. So this is a 0.001% chance on any given day that the amount of water coming through is going to exceed this value. So this is like a one in a thousand year flood. Probably not something you want to spend the resources on to be able to handle. But that's what we're trying to put together. Okay, so first thing we do is go to the data file. And we're going to put it into a data frame. Now, one thing I will um, also have us do is that, uh, well, when we run into that problem, we'll get, I'll, I'll talk about it then. Okay. So we see the data. We have a data frame. The first column labeled zero just because that's the default for handling data frames. We, and then we have a date and a flow. Okay. That's all we got. So uh, now we need to plot it. So can someone tell me how we can plot this? Almost everything we're going to be doing today comes directly from the lesson. And we just need to copy and paste and replace the stuff that we need to. So if we look at the lesson, where do we see what we want for plotting? Probably something to do with this, wouldn't you think? I don't know, maybe, maybe this one. Which parts do we need? We're wanting to plot the flow value versus the date. Those are our two columns here. So what might we need in order to plot? Um, everything we're going to need is in this one section here, probability estimation modeling. So we don't have to look for the whole thing. Once again, it's probably worth noting that the homework is doing exactly what we're about to do, but for more instances of it. So this is exactly what we're about to do. This is what we're about to do, except using logs. And here's another one, and here's another one, and here's another one. So if you'd like to get to a point to where you can do the homework, it's probably in everyone's best interest for us to get through this. Is it zoomed out? That's strange. Let me try. Is it still zoomed out weird? Oh, OK. Very good. So how do we plot our data? Right. We need to get some plot code. So which which one do you want to get? 
This one? Do we need any of this stuff? I don't know. Let's... So we know... Here's what we can do. We want to plot something, okay? And I don't have any idea what any of this stuff does. I'm just uh, a student. I don't, I don't know what any of this is. But I do see a plot here. And this seems to be kind of the plot stuff we've been using. It's using the word plot. So maybe this will be useful. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's take it and put it here. All right. Now, the nice, well, not the nice, the uh, important thing to think about when you're taking code and copying and pasting, which you're going to do a lot. In fact, that's probably at least half of what you're going to do. Um, I can't just copy and paste it and expect it to work. Sure, it's doing the same kind of thing that I'm wanting to do. But it's got all the wrong variables and all the wrong values plugged in. So I need to figure out what I need to change about this code in order for it to uh, work like I want it to for my stuff. So if I take this part right here, I believe if I put this part of the code in, oh wait, it's not, oh, I need the functions, which are, where are they? Yep. Of course, it would make me go all the way to the top. There it is. All right, so these functions here um, are needed in order for the plot function to work. So we're just going to yank it. We'll steal those. Put them here. OK. All right, I got a plot. It's, it's a plot. Is this the plot we want? So our uh, lab, just like our homework, has nicely uh, written out comments telling you everything we need to do. The instruction we got, we want to plot the data frame as a plot of peaks versus date. OK, we have a plot. Is this a plot of peaks versus date? Yes, we do need to change the data because this isn't what we would like to plot. In fact, it has nothing to do with our data at all. Moreover, there's another thing here. Uh, how many things are plotted on this plot? So in this graph here, yeah, there's two, the red and the blue. Well, I don't need both. I only need one. So this is going to get us kind of lead us down the rabbit hole of which line of code in here actually does the plotting and how it works. So I know for a fact that there have to be at least two of those lines. Well, the only thing in here I see that has maybe two, not only that, here's a big hint. This function must do the plotting somehow. I don't know how, but somehow it does it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one of them because I only want to plot one thing. OK. Now I've got it plotting one thing, but it's not plotting what I want. So here's what we'll do. Somehow this function takes an argument X and an argument Y and then some other stuff to plot things. Let's print them out and see what they look like. Print X. All right, so X seems to be a series of numbers. So it's like a list, OK? What 
what else about X? There's 101 of them. And it is a list of type. Let's see, what did I, oh, I need to do that. Floats, there's a bunch of floats. So it is a list of length 101 and everything in there is a float. Okie doke. Let's look at why. Well, actually, before we look at why, we need to recreate whatever x is for our data. So the things we're wanting to plot is peaks versus date. One of those things is going to be the x. One of those things is going to be the y. So which one should be which? I mean, you guys are really leaving Chris just like being a, a hero here. Uh, peaks for Y, date for X. Yeah, I would say so. And the reason I would say so is generally when you're doing a plot of anything, you want your most independent variable to be your X, just because it's easier on the eyes to visualize that it's going left to right rather than up and down. So time is more independent than the flow value. In fact, I would say that there is a dependency from this one here. So let's try and plot our date. Is there anything else about X that we might notice before we move on to trying to replace it? The answer to that's yes, but if someone could point out what it is. In fact, I think one of the comments actually says it. Let's see. The equivalent code for that was here. Is there anything special about this list? What are the things I know about it? Well, there's 101 elements. It goes from, yep, negative 10 to 10, but that's kind of interesting. Negative 10 is on the left and 10 is on the right. This is what we call sorted. So this list is sorted. If it weren't sorted, who knows what might happen? Okay. So we want to try to replace this with our flow somehow. So let's try it. OK. <sighs> Print our uh, data frames called DF, I believe. And we want the is it flow or peak flow. OK, so we've got a collection of stuff. Let's see if we can just plug it in there. Oh, I know we need time, don't we? Kind of had an issue. So x and y must have the same first dimension. So what's the problem here? Well, I replaced one of these, and I didn't replace the other. So this one, I think, is 101, and this one is like 80. 
So we have to replace both the X and the Y before it'll be the same size. So DF uh, flow. Okay, let's see what that does. Hey, that's something. It's ugly, but it's something. Now, notice our data is not sorted. I can make this a little bigger, 15 by 10, maybe. It's something. Now, what I was mentioning before is if I look at the flow here, I get like 48,300, 838, and all that stuff. If I try to check out the type of one of these things, we have string. So that's kind of an issue. Kind of an issue because I want what these numbers actually are rather than the string representation of them. Well, that's easy to fix. There is a nice little um, method you can use. Like this. I'm going to make the, the date series in my data frame the date series, but as an integer instead of as a string. OK. That won't get us a whole lot more. But it is more, the system is able to actually sort it. So if you are plotting date versus uh, peak, uh, hey, here, here's a bonus for the people actually paying attention. Um, this plot right here is correct. The other one where it was just a line is not correct. So if you turn it in with just that line, uh, that's a point off. OK, free answer. That's what everybody likes, right? Um, OK, so question is, have we plotted peaks versus date? I think so. Uh, I didn't change the, uh, the labels, but we can fix that. Uh, date, and this is flow rate. And this is going to be date versus peak flow. All right. Now, now we're satisfied. OK, let's move on to the next one. Descriptive statistics. Hmm. We want to get some descriptive statistics about our data frame. How do we do that? Can I show the code to sort? Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't actually have to sort it myself. The moment I converted everything into uh, a data frame full of integers instead of a data frame full of strings, it knew how to handle it. The plot function knew how to handle it. So once you convert it, it'll be fine, and you only have to run this once. So descriptive statistics, that's pretty simple. We've done this a thousand times. Uh, df.describe, easy peasy. Now the numbers are a little funky, but this is the same thing. Eight to the e to e1 is 80. Uh, they don't have the same means, but the, the reason this is weird, we don't really care about the standard deviation and the mean of the date. In fact, really, the only thing I care about here is the count to make sure they're the same. And we already know they're the same because they plot the same. Um, the reason it's weird is because the date looks like this. This is year 1943, month 7, day 30. So I could make a function to turn this into something nicer, but there's, there's no point. We're not really concerned with the date, uh, how it looks. But the flow, these are things we're going to want. OK, so now we're going to do the exact same thing 
that we were doing in the lesson. And what is the next part of the lesson? Well, we want to have the, the data plotted on there. And we want to have some kind of fit to it. So what should we copy? We're definitely going to need the plot. Why? Because we need the plot. So we definitely need this one. All right. And this will be at the bottom. OK. Do I need this one? Well, this is where the sort takes place. So maybe, I don't know. Definitely the sample mean and variance. Let's try getting this one. Heck, let's just get them all. And uh, now that. Now we're going to play the game of everything's been copied and pasted. And there's no way this is going to work the way I want it to, because I haven't changed anything. So I haven't changed it to be appropriate for my data. So even if this plots something, it won't be what I want, because what I'm wanting is it to plot using our data. So let's run it. All right, it does something. But this isn't what we want. So where do we need to start changing stuff? Well, I'll give you a big hint by making the labels what we want. Let's see. This will be max flow, right? I suppose peak is the correct term. And this is a uh, date. Actually, I think it's probably fine. OK. Change data on the plot data again. Um, yes and no. So you're on the right track. Uh, the everything in blue is a scatter plot, and everything in the red is a, is a line plot. Now, uh, let's look at YCDF. What the heck is YCDF? Um, that's a good question. Where was it defined? Oh, yeah, it's up here. And it's supposed to look ugly, so I'm not worried about the red one. The red one just is what it is. What about the blue one? Blue one's definitely not what I want. So this one's totally fine. This one, not so much. And why is that? It's because the sample I'm using here is just some random numbers. And that's not what we want. We want to use our own data. So in order to change the data, I need to change one of the things here. So sample is just a variable name. I don't need to change it. I want to randomly select stuff that I want to keep. So the only things left are population which is a list of random numbers. And well, I guess they're not random. And the number I want to pick. So really, the only thing I can think of changing is this. What do we want to change it to? Well, we probably would like to have it as part of our data, right? And the thing we're interested in plotting Yeah, I think that's right.
Let's try it. Okay, well, it's ugly, but it turns out this is exactly what we want because we're really only concerned in having the scatter plot be correct. Now, the thing is, we only picked 25 out of our 80, but that's fine. This number can, it can't be anything. It needs to be more than like 12, but 25 is okay. So have we done what we set out to do? Plotting position function, yep. Right, we have our plot and we have a line just like this. See, remember how it says it's not a very good plot. Well, let's fix this red line here because the red line here is not very good. So what's next? Well, all this stuff. All right, let's put it in there and see what happens. Uh, let's see, will it work on just one go? No, it doesn't. Now, why would that be? Well, the blue is okay. So something, either YCDF or X, is not what we want. The question is, how do we get it to be what we want? Let's look, where are they defined? Well, they're both blank lists here. We're just putting the numbers in like that. Okay, well, let's print them out, see what they look like. Print X. Okay, it looks to be zero to 100. All right, let's print Y, C, D, F. So it is a whole bunch of numbers. that aren't really fit very well to what we want. So maybe there's another part somewhere in the lesson that does what we want. So this doesn't do it. Let's go look. This looks pretty not promising. Maybe we try this instead. Hey, look at that. So is this red line better than this red line? I'd say yes. Okay, so we visualized everything that we're gonna visualize. This is good enough for now. You can change some of the variables if you want, but it, it's at least better than this. All the plotting and all the visualizing is just there so that we can have something visual. The real thing we wanna fill out is this. So I need to know what these numbers are. Well, how do we do that? Well, luckily we have this. Now I've already done this. So we're gonna copy this and put it in here. And what this does is given a guess for a number, I am going to try to approximate whatever quantile I'm looking for. So let's start with 0 0.25. Now, mu and sigma, they have to be hard coded for reasons that aren't very important. But let's see, what's not defined? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is uh, interesting. 
when what this means is that the algorithm, the the code, the Python itself will only do something so many times. So if it reaches that point, it says, I'm not going to run forever. Maybe you need to try a different input. So let's try a different input. This. OK. So what this says is given a guess of 800. We approximated a flow value for 1128. And when we plug that back in, we get a quantile of 27 percent of 27. So there's like a, what, 73% chance? Well, we want 75. So let's try putting our guess a little closer to 1128. In fact, I'm just going to use it. OK. That's pretty close. Let me check. Are these the right? Um, mu and sigma. I think so. Where did I put them? Here. Yep, 1197 and 15022. Ah, it is a little bit different. Let's try with that. Oops. OK. So now we get one of 1065. Closer. What about for the 50th? OK. It's wanting us to try. That's interesting. Oh, well, I guess that's that does make sense. If it's the 50th percentile, it being the actual mean itself isn't that crazy. That's pretty cool. And using this method, by changing the quantile, we can fill out anything anything we want in here. So if I wanted the, um, now the, I guess what I'll say is the way this function works is that given your uh, mean and your standard deviation, um, if you plug in a value, it will give you a percent of how might how much you might uh, exceed it by. So one second. That. Okay. But yeah, just change the quantile and you're off to the races, just like we did here. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, the last thing is we have we know everything we need in order to change this so you can come in here and change this to whatever what would i say uh 1128 did i i think that's what it was but what's all this scary stuff in the homework well it's the exact same thing except you've got an additional more things to fill out so this is the normal distribution that this is what we did now, what the heck is a log normal distribution? That doesn't make any sense. What the heck is a gumbel double exponential distribution? This is, this is crazy. Well, don't freak out. If you look at the lesson, the only thing we're doing is we're taking all of our data and applying the log function to it. That's it. So this is the same data. We've just transformed the whole thing using the log. It's not very hard to do. Everything in, uh, in order to actually make it happen is here. So I believe just changing the variable name, and then this these lines up at the top are all you need to add. Granted, this is for bear grass, and we want to do it for our DF. Same thing for um, uh, 
the double exponential. Here's the function in order to do it. And where is it being applied? Huh. Ah, there it is. Same thing here. Here's the function to, oh, it's got the rest of them in here. Here's the function for the, uh, to apply the gamma. And we're just applying all of these and filling them out. So no need to freak out. You simply get the function definition to make this happen. So I'll use the log example because it's the easiest one. You simply get the function to uh, apply log, which is this. And then you do the dot apply method. And it's all here in the lesson, just copy and paste. And uh, that's everything. So long as you follow it along, it's pretty much copy and paste. The whole thing's 95% copy and paste. So uh, any questions? Alrighty then. Well, I'll see you guys on Friday.